everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady, and today I am going to tackle a houseplant project. That's right. I am not much of a houseplant person. I went through my houseplant phase about 20 years ago, but because I spent so much time in my office on Zoom, I felt obligated to have a handful of things in my backdrop that are real, just to prove to people that I actually am a plant lady. Meanwhile, I have like thousands of plants in my garden that require my time and attention, but I figured um, I'd make this video because it may be helpful for those of you who are more interested in house plants. One of my pet peeves in general about buying plants is the soil that the plants come in. And it never fails that indoor plants are always potted in peat moss. I loathe peat moss and I know that might not be a popular opinion, but hear me out because I, I don't come to rash decisions. As a grower, I understand why peat moss is used. It's like a sponge. It absorbs a lot of water. And when you are in a greenhouse setting and you're watering every day, it makes a lot of sense. However, take that plant out of the professional environment and you know you see plants sitting at the garden center especially places like lowe's and home depot where they don't get watered and all of a sudden they're dry well it's the peat moss that dries out so incredibly fast and then it makes the plants go into like this crazy suffering mode and so i have not used any peat moss based potting soil for years and a few years ago, I guess probably six or seven years at this point, I started using Soil Cube as my exclusive container mix. And it's done a world of good for me. For one thing, it's reduced my need for watering and fertilizing. Um, but I mostly do that outside. And today, as I was watering this pothos, which seems to need water every like couple of days, and it's way too much maintenance as far as I'm concerned, but I decided instead of like getting rid of it because it has grown really well and it does look pretty in my Zoom background, I'm just gonna pot it up and use Soil Cube and then I know that I won't have to constantly be watering it. So I am going to fill this container up with soil right now. I didn't bring the pothos outside because I think it's too cold. It's used to inside temperatures. And you know, we're above freezing, but I think it would still kind of do some damage. So we'll finish the potting up process inside my house and then I'll show you the finished product. So I realize it probably sounds like I'm being dramatic when I say that Soil Cube changed my life, but it really did. Until this product, I really had never found a soil that I liked. And I was constantly having to like mix things up and I don't know. It just, when I found this, Boy, it just really changed everything for me. And that's why I talk about it so much because if it did that for me, I know it'll do that for you. And the great thing about these small bags is that they're actually available in the lower 48 states. So you can just go to soilcube.com and order these one cubic foot bags. You'll actually be surprised at how much soil is in them, um, especially if you're using it just for containers. Now, when you're doing a big landscape project, it definitely makes more sense to get the big yellow bags. Those are one cubic yard. But for containers, these small bags are really ideal. And you can see it's just like black magic. It truly is black magic. <laughs> Unlike most compost, this is actually derived from three distinct ingredients, wheat straw, grass clippings, an aged decomposed cow manure. And it is guaranteed to be uh, free of any sort of herbicides. And it is heated to over 160 degrees so there's no weed seeds in it. And then when they bag it, they actually add microbes so that the soil is living by the time it gets to your house. It's you know full of microbial activity which ultimately will strengthen your root system and help reduce, you know, uh, insect and disease pressure. Okay, so I think that that's about the right amount of soil for now. I'm gonna fill my scoop up with another amount so I can top dress. And then before I transplant the 
blow those into this, I'm actually gonna let the soil warm up to room temperature. House plants tend to be tropical in nature and they're very sensitive to cold snaps. And so you're just best to let everything kind of acclimate to the indoor, indoor temperature. So I'm just gonna carry that all inside and uh, probably wait about an hour. All right, welcome to my office. This is where I spend a lot of my time doing Zooms and writing articles. And Sophia, she's officially the one that answers all the email, I wish. Anyhow, there is the pothos. I bought that from Aldi like a year ago and all of that vining has grown in the 12 months since but I'm really struggling to keep it watered because it's planted in peat moss and it's inside my house where the heat runs. So I know that it's going to be a great solution. It's gonna lower my maintenance requirement. Just getting this thing potted up into a bigger container filled with soil cube. Now, I'm going to make a mess. That's inevitable. And I'm gonna do it right here in the office so I can contain it. So let me show you how I'm gonna go about doing this. All right, so I brought this soil in and stashed it in the spare bathtub overnight so it is now room temperature. I think that's a really critical component to potting up a house plant. You don't wanna use cold soil. And hopefully, I think I did. I think I put the right amount of soil in here and I have my scoop filled with additional soil and like I said I'm going to try to contain the mess as best I can. Now I had this on this cake stand because I was trying to keep water filled in here but honestly it just I just can't keep up with it. So there's actually a lot of reasons that I don't like peat moss. And I talk about this a lot in my webinars. Um, it really does dry out so quickly. It also can be a vector for a lot of diseases. So my goal is to be as efficient as possible when growing a house plant. And that starts with changing out the soil. So I've got that in. Just gonna make sure all these vines are oriented. And it's kind of a, a mess of the plant, but there we go. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I get the soil cube, you know, placed all the way around the base. So let me give you a close up on what this looks like. All right, there you can see the original potting soil. I'm not removing it, but this new pot is significantly bigger and then I'll just dump the scooped soil in and around and it'll be planted once and for all. All right, it's potted. I'm not gonna water it because the soil holds enough moisture. I'm gonna wait probably three or four days before I put more water in. And I have a good big plastic saucer so my wood won't be damaged. And now this is significantly heavier than it used to be. I don't need it to be on that cake stand. Oh. There we have it. A big, viney, crazy looking pothos. And I don't necessarily need all of that coming back down. So toss it over. Or fills this corner and there's still room for me to put these succulents back up. Of course these succulents uh, live outside all summer and the hardest thing about having them indoors is just not watering them <laughs> and usually I have these outside in my heated shed but this one was so pretty and kind of wanted this to look a little more festive, plus I was doing a webinar all about succulents, so I put this in the background and I kind of like having it in here. I was debating on whether or not I should put it in the cake stand, but if I do that, I'll be tempted to water it and that's not what you want to do. Take it from me, I've killed a lot of succulents over the years, bringing them inside and then getting tempted 
in January and February to give them a drink and then they collapse and they completely melt. So don't do that. Well, Sophia and I hope that you have found this video to be at least moderately helpful. If you, like me, are struggling to keep your house plants watered, I highly recommend checking out Soil Cube. Like I mentioned, you can buy this by the one cubic foot anywhere in the lower 48 states. It'll get delivered to your home. And it's really a miracle soil as far as I'm concerned, both outside and in. And um, I know that this pothos is gonna do great and I'm not gonna have to do as much work to keep it alive and watered. And that's really what matters. All right, thanks for watching everybody.